Welcome to St. George's Church in Nashville for our noonday prayers. And if you have a Book of Common Prayer with you, you'll find them on page 138. And we'll begin with a moment of silence and then move forward from there. Give praise, you servants of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. Let the name of the Lord be blessed. From this time forth, forevermore. Let the rising of the sun to its going down, let the name of the Lord be praised. The Lord is high above all nations, and his glory above the heavens. O God, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are fixed on you. For in returning and rest we shall be saved. In quietness and trust shall be our strength. I'm going to read a passage from St. Matthew's Gospel, a parable which Jesus told in the days before he was crucified. Here another parable, Jesus said. There was a master of a house who planted a vineyard and put a fence around it and dug a winepress in it and built a tower and leased it to tenants and went into another country. When the season for fruit drew near, he sent his servants to the tenants to get his fruit. And the tenants took his servants and beat one, killed another and stoned another. Again, he sent other servants, more than the first, and they did the same to them. Finally, he sent his son to them, saying, They will respect my son. But when the tenants saw the son, they said to themselves, This is the heir. Come, let us kill him and have his inheritance. And they took him and threw him out of the vineyard and killed him. When therefore the owner of the vineyard comes, what will he do to those tenants? They said to him, He will put those riches to a miserable death and let out the vineyard to other tenants who will give him the fruits in their season. Jesus said to them, Have you never read in the scriptures, The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone? And this was the Lord's doing, and it is marvellous in our eyes. Therefore I tell you, the kingdom of God will be taken away from you and given to a people producing its fruits. And the one who falls on this stone will be broken to pieces, and when it falls on him, it will crush him. I'm not going to say a word or two particularly about the body of the parable, but about that text which Jesus quotes to them at the end. The stone that the builders rejected has become the cornerstone or the keystone or the headstone. It's one of those words which can be translated various ways. This was the Lord's doing and it's marvellous in our eyes. That's taken from Psalm 118. There was a story, and often there are stories which go around which tell the truth, probably better than trying to focus in on the facts. Now, what is whether there's any truth in this story or not, I don't know, but I like it very much. The temple was being built, Solomon's temple was being built in Jerusalem. And the stones which would make up the temple were being carved in such a way that they would all fit perfectly with one another when they were carried from the quarry to the site where the temple was being born on Mount Zion in Jerusalem. And 
fairly close to the beginning of this procession of stones coming, there was a stone which was delivered and the builders couldn't work out where it should be fitted. It didn't seem to fit into places on the plans or and the conversations which they had with the quarrymen and so forth. So they took it and they put it at the far end of the site and as the years passed with the building of the temple which took a long time to build, uh, the weeds began to grow around that stone and brambles and dirt accumulated around it as tends to accumulate on a construction site. Finally, they got the building built. They got everything together. But there was one stone missing. And they got in touch with the quarrymen and they said, well, did you never make that stone? It was the, the keystone on the top arch of the, of the temple. And the quarrymen said, well, yeah, we sent it to you a while back. So they then went through all the rubble which had gathered and the dirt and the brambles and the weeds and so forth. And there was this stone which the builders had rejected. And they took it and they set it in place and it fitted perfectly. This is Jesus talking about himself and the way that he's talked about by the psalmist in Psalm 113. The stone which the builders rejected has become the most important stone in the whole building, holding it together. And through Christ comes redemption. So remember that story when you think about Jesus Christ and when you think about the way in which at various times of the year there are readings which come up from the scriptures which deal with the stone that the builders rejected that's become the headstone, the keystone, the cornerstone of the building. Now we'll pray for various members of St. George's Joe and Penny, Mac, Layla, Robert, Helen, Blair, Tina, Danielle, Kristen, Ed, Lois, Evans, Melissa, James, Amelia, Abigail, and Alden. We pray for each of these people, Lord. We bring them to you. You know where they are today. You know what they're doing. You know the family circumstances. You know that the anxieties they may have or the joys which they may be celebrating. And we commit them to you that you will show your special blessing to them this day. Pray, pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Now the collect for this week. Grant us, O Lord, we pray thee, to trust in thee with our whole heart, seeing that as thou dost always resist the proud and confide, who confide in their own strength, so thou dost not forsake those who make their boast in thy mercy. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now as our Saviour Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom 
and the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. Blessed Saviour, at this hour you hung upon the cross, stretching out your loving arms. Grant that all the peoples of the earth may look to you and be saved, for your mercy's sake. Amen. Now may the peace of God, which pierces all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen.